Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris Ormi and after a couple of days away um, doing some work on the computer, trying to get things back on track we return to Starters Order 7. Thank you very much for bearing with us as uh, we had that unforeseen delays. I'm hoping to have a more permanent fix at some point in the future, but it probably won't be soon. I need to figure out exactly how I can fix the computer, how much it's going to cost, and how to get that. So, yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting. That's for sure. It's going to be interesting, but hopefully all is well. We do have some races booked today, and I do more or less just want to get right back into the swing of things. We've got a few races booked. We've got our breeding all done for the season. We've got some yearlings that we're probably going to keep some of, um, if not all of them. And we've started our third transfer list. We've got two sets of 60 horses on separate transfer lists. We're going for number three. We're building there. And I will whittle those down and then put them all into one save uh, as best I can, whoever's left over. And then just interbreed them and get the best of the best onto their own transfer list. And we'll, uh, you know, we'll use that then going forward. So I am planning on running my breeding save alongside this one uh, for the next few days as well. I do think for the next week, maybe just over a week, we should be seeing double uploads every day. So let me know what you think about that, if it's too much content or not. Uh, it will not be a permanent thing. Um, I may go on to some live streams where I feel appropriate, and I may head back to do those on Twitch, or I may do them here on YouTube. They wouldn't always be uh, status orders, but some of them would. If I did them on YouTube, they'd probably be... Uh, focus somewhat on starters order so let me know your thoughts and feelings on all of that hit me up comment section down below while you're there smash that like button hit subscribe if you already haven't done so notification bell so you don't miss a thing without further ado let's get down to business not many races for some of our horses bellamaker's got race number two barawar has got race number three but we're opening up with the debut of Royal Aura. Now, it's been an interesting sort of, you know, time again where the auctions have not really treated us well recently. We got to see what Mazika was like and Apache Ridge, who was a good two-year-old way back when. Bright decision. Like, there's, there's not much that came out of those auctions. And we're whittling down now our four-year-old stable until we can get really a good core of racers that we don't have to worry about. We know they're good enough. We know they'll just be able to run and do their thing, and that'll be fine. So, yeah. Still thinking about putting Dream Cuckoo into the breeding barn. Like I say, that's going to be really reduced going forward. But Royal Aura hasn't got a race, so... We've made sure that's come to fruition right now. And like I say, I think this is pretty much the end for Dream Cuckoo and Alexagon as well, actually. That's the final kind of races booked in for them. So we've got a couple of races here. And it's going to take some time to get through them. But once we're done, we're going to be kind of done. We're going to be left with only Colts in the stables. So that should be fine. I would like to breed from one or two of those coats, but yeah, we've got to figure out the best two or three to do it so we don't miss any good game breads and we don't spend ages just being on that sort of, you know, weird sort of situation, just breeding from eight of our own studs over eight years and just, yeah, the horse is going to change and going to age. We're not going to show up be sure how that really affects things tipsters today say ballerina coastal passage i say i agree a b is okay reverend green we've seen do something frankie figs in and around um these races a lot but seems to have aged out of that danger threat zone we'll see we will see coastal passage does seem to be 
sort of heavily favoured, high rated for a grade two winner. Might be another one of those that, you know, has been coming close in grade ones, but just needs that right race. We've seen a few of them on this save and the previous save come in to really make that an issue for us. So hopefully not today. The one mile, one full on Woodward. It's a grade one. And we are underway. We're out of the gate. Okay. And there we go. You see Coastal Passage on that inside actually doing quite well here early on. Then into Ballerina, that great. We've got Reverend Green on the outside there leading the pack then. Sandwiched in between Palio Square and Count de Marche are ourselves. Back to Albia, El Conquistador and Cape Moss Frankie Fig off the screen right now. We make our move up just stalking for the final two furlongs. We like doing this. We're going to push now down this home straight. The final stretch of this race. The final furlong. Reverend Gein Green kicks on. I did not see that coming. Royal Orunder. Threat here from Ballerina. Couldn't get up on Reverend Green. Now getting pushed out by Ballerina. And it's going to be a third place race. Wow. Wow. I, ex I expected more. I expected so, so much more. Oh, that's kind of... Uh, it's kind of thrown me there slightly. I expected... Expected more. Okay, breeding barn, Royal Order. Let's take a look at this scientifically then. So, potential is good. Extra speed isn't anything special. A little bit of cruising burst is nice. But on the whole, I really don't see anything spectacular about this horse. Cruising burst might be about the best thing it has to offer. Yeah. I mean, okay. We could definitely win more with it, but I really don't think I'm going to race it much, and I don't think I'm going to breed from it much. Uh, Bold Niku, I think we're in a better position here. 85 extra speed, 85 potential. Rest of them aren't too bad. Higgy Forest, 80 but 90 extra speed with a full finish as well. Like, they're okay. Takiana, you know is fantastic then we get round to a horse like c tour who doesn't have that potential that we like but has the extra speed but doesn't have the cruising burst or finish to really stand out hasn't raced well and then we got bella maker who lacks some extra speed and cruising burst but has the potential so like who who there makes it? I don't know. Perhaps C2 it doesn't. Bellamaker's on the cusp. I'd say those three do. Takiana, Boldniku, and Higgy Forest definitely do. And then Barawara, I think, does as well. Not a full finish, but pretty good elsewhere. So, yeah, I think Bellamaker makes it. So, probably C2 is the next person to be removed. Um, which kind of sucks because we've had some really good times to see to her, but we're not breathing from them. Not when we have these horses that we do have ahead of them. Um, I didn't put any four year olds, no, I just put my oh, yeah, I put Refuge and then Rich Desire, interesting horses. Um, but yeah, no, we, we're not going to put any four year olds in there. We're yet to breed really from that fang. We've got Safranana and Bold Cuckoo. Probably both of those are okay, but we've, we've done little bits of breeding there. Double Dara we haven't yet bred from. 80, 90, half. Uh, maybe we do, maybe we don't. Vanguard Dream. 
yeah, I think we can definitely be ruthless. We can be ruthless right now. And we can get rid of all those. So that fang can still breed with everyone. And then we might bring one or two in to breed over the next couple of seasons as well. That makes sense to me. Okay. No, no, I'm happier that my numbers aren't all over the place. And I get sentimental. I don't like giving up these horses that have been, like, really good for us. But at the same time, they're not good now. They're not going to be bred from. They're just taking up space and races, which they're not really even performing in that well. So, you know, that, that becomes even more difficult for me to justify giving them either a race or take up a space in the breeding barn. So Takiana and Dream Cuckoo. We head to Leopardstown today. I'm not sure which one is up first, but we do have the two. Well, that was weird. The game glitched out a little bit there. Dream. Dream Cuckoo, the Kumo Fastnet Rock Matron, one mile grade one, three year olds and a Above. Okay, Larissa's in here. Yeah, they're probably the one I'd worry most about right now. But okay, Dream Cuckoo could be the last race we see before heading into the breeding barn. Had a good run so far. 137 rated, 9 grade 1 wins, 90 extra speed, 85 ability and potential. Not bad. Not bad. And there we go. We are out to the gate well enough. And we're running now down the inside. Going to jump into the lead here against the rail with Ruby setting just above us now with Icaressa and Minamina on the outside. Back to the main field there. Larissa uh, on the outside. That number two horse just inside is Arashena. Uh, Dangerous horses for sure. Final two furlongs now. The hunt for home begins down the home stretch. We're behind by about half a length, but soon powering through and up by a full length by the time we hit that uh, one and a half furlong distance. We're distancing out now. Nothing is coming up from deep just yet. Half a furlong to go. Here comes Minamina. Ruby setting as well. As Icaressa, we slow down dramatically there towards the end of that race. I'm not sure why, but I didn't really like it. Yeah, we seem to be very, very slow. Whether we, we left off or not, I don't know. Apparently, we dwelt. I didn't see too much of that myself, but we didn't come out the gates uh, as quickly as I thought we would. Although I thought we did. But we got up and we got the job done. And that is good. Don't we jump up to 140. Yeah, we didn't jump up. We, we stick on our 137. That's 10 group one wins. But as I say, I think if we can find a horse with a bit of enthusiasm, cruising burst, full finish application, that would be a nice pairing to put with Dream Cuckoo. So we have options. We have options that are running right now, where I think that would be the case. And, yeah, we, we can get that done. So, I think she's done. 10 grade 1 wins is a fantastic career. Absolutely fantastic career. And Takiana right up there alongside them. They both now have 10 grade 1 wins. Let me just update my notes there. But, yeah, Takiana... You could be lucky, looks a little warm. And yeah, to the end of the earth, probably the other good horse in here that we would need to worry about normally. One mile, two furlong, Quipco. We've got Aberavan and Hesma there tipped. Uh, back ball back. He'll probably go off really early, get uncontrolled. If we can stay out of his path a little bit, and then when he fades, just sort of run past and home. I think that will really, really be the best course of action. That's what I expect to see. So let's see. Takiana runs again. 137. 
Well, we seem to come out okay. We were zoomed a long way out there, and it wouldn't let me zoom in. But Bob, uh, back Bob back is there with to the end of the earth up front. Amber Avon, Bob's stable mate, right there as well, and Hesma on the inside. A group of four, you could be lucky, Louis Land, Lady in Waiting, and the Dubai Surprise. Just ahead, there are Super Duplex. Then it's us, looking like we want to go through the field here, which could be dangerous, and him, the more right at the end. We're running into a blind alley. We kick down the inside. We kick down the inside again. Now the outside of To the End of the Earth. We finally managed to find a way through just before the two furlong marker. Held up a touch. But will it count now down the home stretch? Will it affect us? We're pulling away from To the End of the Earth. Hesma now and Louis Ladd super duplex. The three coming up. It looks like Louis Ladd's falling off. Hesma two super duplex. They're holding on to second. But Hesma will come through. Good run for them in third. Lady in waiting up in fourth. Great last minute die from them. But Takiana with a great run. 139. You troll me. You troll me, game. Oh, you troll me. 139 rating. We're so close to reclaiming that 140 that we only held for two races. We're so, so close. Ah, dear me, dear me. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'll see where it comes. I'll see where it comes. If it does come, that is. We're just going to have to wait on that one. Okay, Dream Cuckoo is going out to the breeding barn. We're going to find ourselves Daresh and get breeding there. Try and get as many covers on Daresh as possible. Because they were a very good horse. And the, the brief test we did may hint at them being a good breeder. So everyone's now back on one screen here. No need to rotate down and try and find more horses. We're all where we need to be. So we've got a few more races to come. We've got a uh, Friday auction before that. We haven't had the best of luck, Janud. Janud. I mean, I'm tempted. Grand Diamond's a decent horse. Like, a decent horse. Deli Time hasn't produced anything else. And then Viva Ronaldo, until we got to the Triple Crown races, it was an absolute beast. Baby Don't Cry seems okay. But you know it's got both of them. Maybe they were just good breeding pairs. Maybe. Maybe this is a really bad mare that Rising Caliph was bred to. I don't know, there's something about Janud. There is something about Janud. It's like Magnitude and a few others. I just believe that there's a lot of quality there somewhere. So that, look at that extra speed. Look at the extra speed. If that potential comes... If that's a low potential dam... And if if they've got less than, say, 85 extra speed. Like, they've got to have about 85 extra speed, surely. But if, if I can breed this to a mare that's got, like, 70 to 80 potential and extra speed. I think we don't lose anything from this dam, but we do gain potential. Because I think, I think Janu's got potential and ability. I, th I think they're okay there. I'm tempted next season. I'm tempted next season just to run through and breed everyone from Janud. 
I'm tempted. Now, Glyph's not going to be anything good. We're just going to put him Geld put back into the auction and get some of that money back, perhaps. I mean, how much did we pay? So, 837. So, 837, I guess. Yeah. We didn't really learn anything, but maybe, maybe there's something to Janude. I do want to breed from that fang. I do. How old would Janude be? see eight so they're both eight okay oh no you're six yeah no i, I can do Janud next year i can oh, i mean look at that fang look at that fang it, it, if, i mean yeah Janud, Janud that fang probably my next two years and then I need to start working in Takiana, Bonaku, Higgy Forest. And then maybe the other two don't make it to the breeding barn. I don't know. There'll be seven. Retire them from the breeding barn at eight. That might make sense to me. That might make sense. I might... Let me go make a note. Okay, so I've got that written down. Kind of a plan. I'm still tempted with magnitude. Green Manalishi. Oh, there's a few in there. There, there are a few in there, but we're not going to get round to all of them if we're breeding everybody to the same horse. And I do kind of want to do that. So when I when I've identified in the past a good breeder, and I've only done one or two, and I go back the next year and they're no longer there, like that's a horrible feeling for me. That is a horrible, horrible feeling for me. Uh, Fly by White, six years old. Harold is six years as well. Both in this. They're going to be the best domestics here, I think. The Young Big Storm might have something to say with that. But uh, ZZ Top's okay. American Horse is here. Ballerina, 2010. Way for Life is in here as well. Reverend Green still waiting to make their move. C2 is decent. Could win. But, again, I don't. No, really? I just don't know. It is our only miler. So we are going to keep it out and race it. But I don't know if I breed from C2 or not. Uh, there's some nice things here. And then there's some things that I just don't like. So, yeah. It's an interesting one for sure. But they've got time and races to win me over. Oh, I forgot to update Woodbine. I forget every time. It's okay, though. 5.13 of the start it mod is out. So I'm hoping that I can just download everything and um, it will fix some of these issues. So we're doing quite well. Big Stone's there. We're on the outside. 2010 down the inside. Ballerina starting to make a move. The Battle of the Greys for the line is what I expect to see. Down to the final furlong, though. Big stone on the inside. We've got fly by white and way for life coming through. And C2 just falls off a cliff here over a mile. Look at us go bad there. Way for life, fly by white, ZZ top coming through, running well. The four year old Canadian, I believe. Uh, good run for them. Big stone. The young dream gets the job done. Well, well, well. Marmaduke. Okay. Okay, so we've got Big Stone with three grade one wins and Miss Neat with four grade twos. Almost one at Longchamp. Who beat you? Soha. Ah, they're okay. There's a decent enough field, though. Marmaduke. Okay. 
and Miss Executive, Baller Briggs, and Big Stone. So probably two good people there. Marmaduke. Okay, okay. Adding to the list to check. Adding to the list to check. Um, but yeah, not, not exactly the result I'm looking for. I've got to be honest, not exactly the result that we're looking for. Possible stud booking, that fang, Akalinch. I mean, won some grades. It's for Giovanna. It's not like I don't know Concerto very well, but Quinton Dex and Giovanna. Nothing else, but still, okay. Um, could be decent. That that could be decent. You know what? I'm accepting that. I'll take the dollar. I'll take the dollar, and you can breed. Uh, yeah, we're not we're, we're not doing the two year olds. We're still not doing two year old auctions. As bad as yearling auctions have been, I still at least trust myself to make more educated choices there than in a two year old where we just don't know anything at all. Okay, Bella Makeup. And, um, yep. And the Lexagon will run today. Bella Makeup's up first. Not a great run to begin with. Waited a long time to come out this season and didn't look good. Did not look good. But it's a, it's a mile and 110 yards, which. It's as close to a mile one as really I could book. So yeah, there, there's going to be something to say about that. Um, the field isn't too bad. You know, Pearl Catcher we know, Armager we know. Um, Camera Shy looks okay. They're a grade one horse, but not really good form. But probably, a, you know, not in a great field here. Let's be honest. It does not look like a great field. Um, since we're under distance, we're going to challenge earlier. Because if we do challenge earlier, that leaves up the stamina for the extra distance that we're not running, if that makes sense. So it, we're a mile one running at basically a mile and half a length. Half a length, half a furlong. So... There's a little bit more distance we're used to running. So if we go earlier and put that effort in earlier, that might be, you know, using up the extra that we have that maybe they don't. But yeah, Pearl Catcher. I'm, I'm worried about Pearl Catcher. Another one that's been so close to winning grade ones and been in the mix for so long. Past their best, maybe, but hey, we thought the Reg was never going to win a grade one. Pearl Catcher's right up there. We've got three or four this season who look likely to make their mark in that way. And Pearl Catcher certainly can be in that group. Decent enough start. We drop off to the back though with uh, Mr. Supreme and KVF chasing them down that grey there. Armager on the outside of Chambers, then back to Pearl Catcher. Camera Shy on the inside, up to us. And El Conquistador against the rail. The other grey of Netley Marsh. Then Frangley on the rail, and Deity to the rear. We go round the outside, trying to find room. The long trip around. We're coming up now, attacking second place Camera Shy, as they also make a charge down the final furlong. The home stretch beckons. Bellamaker. I don't think we went early, but we're going strong down the finish. We're pushing away, hand in the air, Chambers in second, back to camera strike, Pearl Catcher in fourth, and I think Armager came fifth there. So a decent run by Bella Maker. I don't think we went to, uh, we were, we told the jockey to go early, but I don't think we really did. And it's still a very good run. It's a very good run. We don't hit that 130, but 129. 
We are 129. Okay. Oh, it's annoying. It's annoying. Got two 129s. They won't go over the 130 mark. Then we got our 139 and 138. Like, they should be 140s. Like, he's trying to get there. Takiana's trying to get back there. Barawara is slowly improving, 136. We'll see if they can hit 140 now as well in their race. C2, can they get over 130 for the first time in their career? And the Lexagon's just holding 130 right now. So, we're right in the mix of things. We are right in the mix. See, awesome Freddy. Way for life. Torso Spring. Palio Square. See, that's the thing. Palio's only 1-1. One, one. Torso Spring only 1-1. One, one. Everything's on way for life. That could be Connox Pride coming through there. Casual Garcia. Only 1-1. One, one. It's, it's tough to tell. It's tough to tell in the breeding sometime. I do like the group wins here, though. And then I look for stakes winners. High number of horses, high percentage to back that up. Not too many group two, uh, group one winners here. Prince de Bury. But not bad, really. Almost everything's a grade two there. We got a horse which is winning... A couple of grade ones. Okay. I mean... Yeah, Janud is up there too. Look, 9, and that's 34%. King's Chorister we've already bred from. Siberian Tiger we've bred from. Uh, Royal Defense we bred a, a ton too earlier on. Uh, Higgy's Charmer. Synchronized. We tried... We tried Albert as Pictor. We tried Safari. Yeah. So I don't know. Let, let me know what you look for in a horse as well. The AI is, is pretty big, but I don't know. I see Xenophon as well. Captain's Covey. I really like Captain's Covey. Four better Lady Broughton as well. We got one horse pretty much winning all the grade ones. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to dive into that too much now. But I do find it interesting to uh, to keep an eye on that and just see kind of who pops up where and what you might be looking for. Ordinarily, I'd be all over Old Firm here. 109 rating. Pretty good. Grade 1 dam, grade 1 sire. 1 a grade 2, 3 year old. Not really done anything in grade 1s. My problem is I don't like the witch doctor. I don't believe they're a great breeder. So, yeah, I'm not really sure on this one. I think I'm going to have to check. And again, we see Xenophon here. And if you were paying attention a moment ago, Captain's Covey, Xenophon was the sire. Got a chance to look at a four-year-old and maybe make a little bit of an educated guess as to if they're any good as a breeder. So, it's going to be cheap. 400000 to see what Se uh, Steady Tiger's all about. Then about a mil should land us old firm. So less than one and a half million to make these decisions. Yeah, see, the witch doctor could be great or could just be average. I've got no clue. 
I've got absolutely no clue. Just doesn't fill me with confidence. Now let's geld and resell. Let's geld and resell. We can do that for Steady Tiger too. Low speed. I've seen some good horses with low speed, but usually it's not a great sign. Yeah, it doesn't have anything here. So unless Lost Link's a really bad dam, which she could be, then Xenophon maybe not the best um, either to breed from. Which means Captain's Corvey might have got a lot of their breeding sort of traits from placement. So maybe I'll keep an eye out for placement. Or I'll just keep an eye out for Captain's Covey if it ever goes up in the auctions. Um, that could be, 100% could be the case. Okay, we're going to geld and sell both of those back. Let's go to the day's auctions. Just make sure they do sell. Okay. It's going to go for a decent amount at least. And yeah, we... uh Again, we lose about two, 300,000. But we pay to figure out a little something. So Xenophon definitely isn't a horse that we live and die by. Which I was thinking of, of actually putting into the breeding schedule and just running a season from Xenophon. So I'm glad that we've, you know, we've paid a little bit of money and we've figured out that that might not be actually the best idea. So mile two for the unbeaten Barawara. Top rated. Top weighted. Good field though. Reverend Green back, Bob back. Dangerous grade twos. Got Ballerina and Ecstasy. We know how good they can run. You could be lucky. Very hit and miss. Adam DeBolio, though, a threat. And Dream Function, I don't know too well, but I think could be a little bit of a force. They do come out of King's Chorister, which is a sire I respect. So, yeah, this could go almost any way. This could go almost any way. It looks like, though, we're amongst the favourites, we're amongst the, the best tipped, and we're looking okay in the paddock with a high rated. We're unbeaten. If we run our race, we could do okay. Okay. Looked like we came out okay. We're going to go towards... The front two and then just tail off into the mid-pack ballerina. Reverend Green leading us out back, Bob back. Not as far forward as they normally like to be, but they're going to sit and stalk for now. We got Adam DeBolio and you could be lucky, the stable mates, side by side. Ecstasy on the inside. There is uh, Flawless on the outside. We go round the outside of Reverend Green now, alongside Bob. Here come the stable mates. Adam DeBolio making a little bit of a move up now. We're going to go side by side then, down the final one and a half, cruising on past the falling ballerina, quite uh, dramatically falling. Half a furlong to go, and we're pushing ahead of Adam DeBolio. He's had a great season. Let's not forget that. But he hasn't come up against our best horses very often. When he has, he's fallen off. But yeah, wins the derby pretty well. We didn't quite have that distance. We move then to the Preakness. We just get up on them. And then they come third in the Belmont. But when all comes said and done, Barawara. I didn't think she dwelt. He dwelt, sorry. But apparently so. Still got up. Still ran fairly well. I didn't see any issues. We moved up. I was a bit scared when Adam came up around two to two and a half and started making a move when we really didn't. But we made it down the home stretch where it counted. 
Dallas Stewart, though, is sitting here with Adam DeBolio, you could be lucky, and Ballerina. Right now, he's got a very decent stable. Very decent stable. Adam DeBolio, Adam DeBolio with Ballerina runs in the family. You could be lucky. Couple of grade twos in there as well. They they seem to be the grade ones though. I don't know. I don't know. Guess we'll see kind of where they go. Yeah, we'll, we'll see where they go. But that's a circle we're getting used to seeing up near the front of races. Uh, no. No. Okay, let's see. Casual Garcia back again. Okay. Had a few runs this year. Seems to be okay. And Roller as well. And Camera Shy. Why do I know the name Camera Shy? That's why. Dreamwalker. Dreamwalker. We like Ocean Mist. Iris Mary was okay, but not really anything great but with British Battler we did produce Eye of the Battler who you know it really isn't bad so we've got a slight glimpse into Dreamwalker already I say Camera Show is a decent horse, Bullfire is a decent horse, Ocean Mist is one I actually like a lot so we'll see we'll see today then Camera shy, okay. Yeah, I don't see too much else in this field that maybe worries us, but see to a they're not the best miler. So I'm not sure how much this will sway me at all. We're at keen them for the Shadwell Turf Mile Grade One race. And we're up there passing the other grey prompt as we move up into stalking position behind Casual Garcia. We've got Tat Spout there. Back to Clone Devil, Camera Shy in the Yellow Silks, Black Sleeves, Red Cap. Miesk Sun, Prompter, White Fusion in the mix there as well. Then out to Lockbar, Engraving, and in Roller. Waiting for people to make their moves. Nobody really does before two. And we're starting that hunt for home now. Down the home stretch. We'll be about level, just about a, a quarter length maybe back at the final furlong. But we're kicking on strong. Nobody's coming in from deep. Casual Garcia's okay. Camera Shy finishes. Last of the pack. Tatis Boat was actually detached at the rear there, but... Yeah, they were ease, but still, I, I don't know. I don't know. Dreamwalker could be decent. Dreamwalker could be decent. That may be one that we're going to try at some point as well. That may be something we can try. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I've got far too many questions and not enough answers to my liking in terms of the uh, the breeding program. But Barawara hits 138. Like I say, that's a good, that's a good run. I like that. I like that. Is that number six for Barawara? It's not bad, you know. That's not bad. And C Tour just sticks at 129 now. Joining another two on the cusp of getting that 130. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's annoying. That's annoying. <laughs> I'd prefer like all these like to have four one thirties and to have three one forties of course. It's kinda of what I'm looking for. We're not quite getting there, sadly. We're not quite getting it. Okay. Um Alexagon's got a race. Uh let me see if anybody else does. Let me let me go book. 
Okay, so we're going to run Lexagon's race here, and then we'll get to the rest in the next video, but hopefully finish out on a high here with the Lexagon. It's not today, is it? It's, it's a few days' time. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Um, But no, we've got... um. We got races booked. They're decent races. I'm not entirely sure how they'll go. But I want to get our lexicons done in. Um there's there's a few that aren't on distance, and there's a few that may not suit exactly, but they're all great ones, they're all good races, and we've really gotta try and see. So okay. Three euros, the Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup. We got one mile one furlong on turf in Keeneland. Good field. To the end of the earth, as a Shana, lady in waiting, teacher, preacher. They're all good. Some are better than others. I think teacher, preacher, not really developed across the season and aged well during the three year old year. But, um,. Horses like Azashena, for example, could be very dangerous and to the ends of the earth as well. Who does take us out into the lead? Then it's back to ourselves, Lady in Waiting, Catherine Seymour, and Ruby Setting. Back to Harrison, Lady on our outside. We've got an Emuara on our inside there as we move up now out of that group. We've got Mazurkanova coming up there, I guess. Teacher Preacher right down towards the end. We're inside the final two now. One and a half furlongs. Heading for home. Down the final stretch here. We're on the home stretch. One furlong. There's the final marker. Teacher Preacher now coming up into third. Running well from deep. Going to get up onto the end of the earth. Not going to catch us though. They're going to take second. To the end of the earth in third. As a Shana with a nice little push at the end. Can't quite reel in Lady in Waiting. But a solid win there for Alexagon. Up to 132. That's not bad. That's our fifth grade one win on Alexagon. I'm glad. I'm glad. It's a nice way to end things. But a good field. I do think that's a good field. Okay, Alexagon will get booked in um, to the Hollywood Derby, which will be their final race. We will get through all these and Alexagon's race in the next one. Everybody has one race, I believe. And like I say, some should suit better than others. But we're hoping. We're hoping. We're going to find out. And like I say, next season we see Alexagon come back perhaps with a bunch of other fun horses. You've got Keynes Alliance and Rafiz, who will be four-year-olds. We've got a bunch of two-year-olds that could make it into the Triple Crown races. But yeah, we're, we're down in number, but quality's still there. Some tough decisions to make who, who goes on for a five-year-old season, but probably, honestly, not that many. Maybe two, maybe three at this point, I'm actually thinking of. The others will go into the breeding barn or just get retired. But, um, yeah, let's finish it up with a, a quick little look at this auction. Absolutely nothing there in the breeders. So, that's where we're going to end things then. We're heading to Royal Ascot with Higgy and Bold Niku. Hopefully, a couple of good races and a couple of good wins. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, I'll see you very soon for the next one. Thank you very much for the patience with a slight hiatus to the series. Like, comment, subscribe, notification bell. You know what to do. I'll see you soon. Till then, take care. Don't forget to have your say. Who races? Who goes to the breeding barn? Have I missed anything you've seen? Or what do you want to see more of? Also keep an eye out for the breeding series starting in the next couple of days, hopefully. 
if the computer holds up we'll get that one started too so i'll run you through my entire process with that and you can see exactly how we do it so let me know i'll see you soon take care behave be safe until next time